Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at planning for airliner flights. Now this is one of those topics that we could probably spend 10 hours on, but I'm going to try to stick to the basics here and kind of what I actually use when I do any sort of airliner style flying. Uh, one thing I do want to say before I want to get too, too engaged here is uh, the fact that the airliners in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, at least the default ones, are not quite as complicated or sophisticated as some of the ones that you're probably going to see with some of the third-party mods. Uh, one thing that I do come from is uh, the X-Plane world, where we have some extremely sophisticated Boeings as well as Airbuses, which have every bells and whistles and flight management computers like crazy. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, at least in November of 2020, doesn't quite have the same level of sophistication, but it does have enough to get us in an awful lot of trouble. And for most folks, that's going to be all we really need. All right, let's go ahead and do it to it. So first things first, we're going to be taking a look at both a little nav map, which is a free, as well as we're also going to take a peek at Simbrief, which is kind of the tool that I use for just about everything these days. This one is pretty cool, but nav map has also got some pretty slick advantages to it as well. And we'll take a look at those kind of side by side. So let's go ahead and begin. So what we're going to do is we're going to be planning a flight that's going to take us from Atlanta Hatsfield International Airport all the way down to basically MCO. This is going to be Orlando International Airport. So the first thing we're going to do if we're working from little flight plan, a uh, little uh, nav map rather, is I'm going to go up to here and click on flight, file, new flight plan. After doing that, I'm going to come up to here. There's a handy dandy little button which allows us to calculate a flight plan. So I'm going to go ahead and click this one. It's going to ask me to dial in my waypoints. So right now we're just going to be proceeding directly from, like I said, cattle to Kim's Press read route description, and it's going to say that it could not find CMO because it's MCO. <laughs> Go ahead and press that one. Make sure IFR has been selected. It goes ahead and calculates everything for me. I'm going to click create flight plan. Now, we can't do this. Now, in the, uh, of course, in the flight simulator, we could just go. We don't have to do anything complicated here. But the reality is this isn't going to quite work for us. The first problem we're going to have is our altitude is way too low. I would expect our altitude for this flight to be closer to 37,000 feet. Now, this is going to get a little complicated on us. By the way, in flight plan, you have the ability to go ahead and actually get these performance files. I'm using the 747, even though I'm going to be flying the 787 today, just to kind of point out some little quirks we're going to have with it. Okay, so this is not an IFR airliner style flight plan. It is a direct flight plan. We need to convert this so that we're using any respective airways along the actual trip itself. So to do that in flight plan, it's actually really simple. There's a little button up here that says calculate flight plan. All we have to do is calculate it from departure destination, select our cruise altitude. We can actually play with this quite a bit to try to find the optimum altitude, but I'm not going to worry about it today. We're going to select jet airways, which is usually the desirable place you're going to want to be. Again, this high altitude airways. And of course, you can go ahead and decide if you want to go direct or you want to go airways. You can always play with this particular calculation, and you can also turn on radio nav aids. I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to leave it just like I have my settings here and press the calculate button. Go ahead and close this out, and now we're starting to get somewhere. You can see that this is a nice little jetway flight here. We take a little uh, right turn and we basically proceed direct to MCL. But we're still not done yet. Our next problem we're going to face is we have to make sure that we use the appropriate departure procedures as well as arrival procedures. Uh-oh, now it got complicated. Okay, so I'm going to come up here to Hatsfield Jackson. I'm going to click on it once. And uh, when I do so, it actually brings up a list of all the possible departures I can select. Oh no, look at how many of these are. Each and every one of these is its own departure procedure. And you can actually select which one you want. Like for example, I'll set it to departures like that. Oh my, okay. So let's, let, let's play the departure game here for a second. So the way this works is we basically need to find a departure procedure that is in line with our flight. So we can see that, uh, let's see, this one doesn't go anywhere. This one doesn't seem to go very far. How about this one? Okay, that's not bad, that's not bad. That's called bang two. Not bad, not bad. Of course, so we'll be taking off to the west here. So that's actually a pretty good departure procedure. Let's see what else we have. No, actually, it's not bad. No, not too bad either. Take a look at some other ones, and they're looking pretty good. Again, you have to go through all of these. That one's kind of nice, because it's nice and tight. I think that's my favorite one so far, actually. Yeah, I like that one. Let's do that one. So I'm going to select the Smelt Z2. Again, we're going to be taking off to the west here, because our wind is going to be coming from that direction. So this is going to be inserted into our flight plan by right-clicking on it and simply hitting Insert. Now, when we do this, it's going to give us an interesting little quirk here. We're going to say 27 right. And that's the fact that now we have to turn the plane around in order to get to this position, which is... Uh... So I'm actually going to go in here and delete this particular flight, uh, point on our flight plane. It doesn't do anything for us. And now we're actually really well lined up here. Okay, not bad, not bad. All right, we're traveling along the airways, traveling along the airways, traveling along the airways, and now we get all the way down to Orlando. So taking a look at Orlando real quick, I'm looking at the winds. I'm noticing they're coming basically out of the northwest. So chances are we're going to be landing on one of these north-facing runways. 
To do this, we're simply going to find which star is going to line us up appropriately. So that one looks pretty good. Let's take a look. Oh, that one's garbage. Uh, that looks really good. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, no, that one goes too far away. Sea World, uh, that's not too bad. Let's try this one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Nope, that one's a little weird. That's eh, looking not so great. Let's try this one. Oh, geez. Uh, no, that's not looking so hot, too. Hey, there we go. Piglet 4. I like that. Let's go ahead and insert that into our flight plan. We're going to assume that we're landing on 3, I'm guessing 3, 3, 5, and eh, 3, 6 right. Okay, now what we need to do now is uh, go ahead and uh, fix this awfulness that we just created by adding this. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to delete this little position. I might as well delete Kristen here. So basically what's going to happen is once we get to this point, we're going to start our approach. We're going to hit that spot there, swing around, come around. Now what we have to do, of course, is to select which one of the approaches to the landing we're going to be picking. Now I'm a huge fan of the ILS approach. Everybody loves the ILS approach. So let's go ahead and pick that. We're going to pick ILS 3.5 right, right click. I'm going to go ahead and insert into plan. And now we are in business. Of course, what did I do wrong? I picked the wrong runway. You're supposed to yell in my ear when I do silly things like that. But of course, I can't hear you because I recorded this app before you saw it. Okay, so now we're looking great. So we're going to take off. We're going to cruise all the way down here. We're going to start descending. We're going to start going along all these little waypoints. We're going to take ourselves a handy dandy left turn here, go over to Silky, line up with JCore, and then go ahead and put us down here on the ground at MCO using an ILS approach. That is not a bad flight plan. As a matter of fact, one of the things I like about this program is if you program it correctly, it'll actually give you details about how much fuel you're going to be consuming, how long the flight's going to take. But even better, if you actually go up to file, you can actually print your flight plan. In this case, I'll do a print preview. In this flight plan, it'll give you everything you need to know. It'll tell you how much fuel you're going to need. It'll tell you your ground speed. It's going to do your estimated winds. It'll give you each and every one of your different waypoints all neatly laid out for you. It'll tell you things about why is this a four-star airport. It'll give you all the details as far as the critical frequencies you need to know. It'll give you all the details about stuff like that. Now, what I always used to do when I, when I was doing any sort of flight like this is I'd actually go over here, like I do air nav. AirNav is a pretty solid source. You know, I go up here to airports, I type in the name of the airport. Okay, and you take these things very soon. Whoa, I did it twice. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Um, so what we would do now is we'd come up here, we type in the name of the airport, we go all the way to the bottom, and then what we would do is we'd actually download copies of each and every one of the procedures we were going to use on this flight. So like if you remember when we were arriving, we were going to be using the Piglet. So I'd actually click on this and I take this file and I'd actually print this out and I have a neat little like kind of stack on my leg that I could go ahead and use to be able to keep track of every little tiny pieces here. And then of course, when I'm doing my ILS approach, I'd have another copy of this one as well. And of course, uh, you want to make sure you have something really, really important, which is going to be an actual diagram of the airport that you're going to be landing on. You're going to want to make sure you get yourself a hand on one of those. I can come up here and grab this one too. And then you've got a beautiful little airport diagram so we don't get horribly lost when we actually arrive at our airport. And that's basically what I would do is print everything out in a giant, you know, 25 page stack. And then I'd be pretty good to go for my actual flight. Uh, one thing I do want to show off real quickly in Little Flight Plan is you actually have the ability to save your flight plan. And this is really, really cool because I can actually go up to file and I can actually export this into Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I could actually click this type in my particular flight plan and then press the save button and it would actually save this flight plan so I could quickly grab it in Flight Simulator. I highly recommend doing it. It works great. So now that you've taken a look at kind of what a little flight plan can do, again, I've skipped about a thousand features here, but that's just enough to kind of get you started. Let's go ahead and take a look at this over in SimBrief. Now, SimBrief is a tool I've always used, so I'm a little kind of biased towards it because it works really, really well for me. Basically, what you do is you create a free account. You go ahead and link up your navigational data. Again, if you're asking about navigational data, uh, that gets complicated. I'm not going to get into that today. Basically, it's what provides you with all the names of the waypoints and all the appropriate procedures. Then we come after we've created an account, set everything up. We go up to dispatch, create new flight. Then all we have to do is enter the details, and it will calculate things for us. So I can come up here. Let's say we're flying for Delta today. We're uh, flight 50. Uh, let's see, we're arriving. Let's see if I do it correctly this time. Let's do it from cattle. We'll do Kilo Mike. Uh, hey, look at that. Kilo Mike, Charlie, Oscar. Alternative is going to be Miami. We can come down here and select all these preset airplanes for us. Again, you can modify these if you need to. Do 7879er, which is what we're going to be flying. You can come up over here. You can change what format it is. I'm a huge fan of the Lido format. All of these formats have their own little quirks to them. Again, pick the one that makes sense. If you're asking what this is, you probably need about 30 more videos explaining it. Don't worry too much. Make sure your units make sense. Make sure this is set to auto, unless you know you're going to be traveling over here. 
Now what you can do is you can do a detailed nav log for those who like you to keep track of things. We could program ETOPS, which basically gives us the ability to fly on two engines across the ocean. We could plan step climbs, which we do not need. We're not going far enough. We could do runway analysis, which is awesome. It'll tell us what runway to use. We could activate NOTAMs, which will actually provide us with information in the real world, I should say, about the airports we're flying to. Go ahead and turn that one on. And of course, we can even come in here and do detailed flight maps of the entire experience. Coming down here, it'll estimate your flight time. It'll tell you what your departure runway is. Arrival runway, until you taxi out. For us, it's only gonna take us 10 minutes to get into position. We can calculate extra fuel, altitude, passengers. We can come in here and say, oh, I really wanted 228 passengers. You can dial in cargo. You can put your name in here. You can even put some remarks. I can say 4FS2020. Um, you can also come in here and you can actually plan your route. Notice the difference in route planning compared to this over in flight plan. They give you some suggested routes. There's even a thing that you can use to generate routes on your own. This is actually really, really cool, but you got to kind of fit with it in order to get it to work. I'm perfectly happy with this route. Chances are somebody stole this off of FlightAware anyway. It gives us a little preview of the route, and then when we're ready to make the flight plan, I come up here and mash the Generate OFP button, press Yes, and away it goes. It takes just a moment. It's not too long, depending on the day. And now wait until you see this. <laughs> So up here is going to be all the critical information we're going to need to know for our flight today. It gives us how much fuel we're going to have to carry. Remember, this is for the 787, not the 74. It's going to tell us our weights. It's going to tell us our routing. It's going to give us some critical information. You can see there's my remarks. You can see my cruise altitude is a flight level of 370. This has actually been calculated based on the actual winds and not estimated winds. It gives me my block time, which is what I get paid for, and then it gives me my air time, of course. Coming down here, it gives me a detailed little view of the route itself, but this is the best Part. This is the flight plan. This would be the big scary thing on a clipboard they hand you as you're getting inside the airliner. It's going to tell us everything. I'm not going to go into crazy detail in here. There's actually a great little guide that if you click on this, you can hold your mouse over things and it'll actually read things to you to tell you exactly what each piece of the flight plan is. But this is plenty of data for me. It tells me all my fuel. If we had a more sophisticated situation with fuel planning, we need to pay way more attention to this. We really don't need to. Scrolling down here, we've got everything we need as far as alternatives goes. Coming down here, we can see what happens if we increase our altitude. It affects our speed as well as our fuel consumption. Coming down here, these are the critical times. You can see my out time, which is when they push us backwards. It's about 4 o'clock Zulu time. We're supposed to land. is going to be about, uh, again, this is about 519 Zulu time. And again, you can write down the actual times here. It gives us all the critical information for our weights, which we can dial right into Flight Simulator. We're carrying 350 people. No cargo. There's our total payload, which is going to be an important number for us later on. You have all of our fuel calculations, everything built in here. And then we get to the flight log. This is just the same as what we saw over in Flight Plan a few minutes ago. You can see this is my departure procedure. This is going to be my actual flight plan itself. This is going to be all my arrival procedures. And of course, this is going to be my alternative information. We have critical pieces with all the different winds, and we have the extremely important flight plan. If you're a VAT sim flyer, you already know all about this, but this is the information you're going to need to know to be able to accurately file an online flight plan, or even a real one, really. But again, I'm not going to go too crazy with this. Coming down here, we get all of the weather reports, but we're not even halfway done. Here comes the notices to airmen. And then, of course, getting down here to the bottom, we get our flight plan. We have a gentle route. We have a little more complicated one. You can see there's a high pressure region right there. You can see all the individual winds as you go down like that, all the way down to lower altitudes, and then you get a vertical profile. Wow. So now that we have all of this information, I can now come down here, go to this one where it says FS2020, click on the download button. Now, this is a little tricky for those of you who are kind of new to this. You're going to have to actually navigate your personal folders to get to the right spot for it. So you can see I'm in my flight simulator folder. You can see all the details up at the tip top right here. I simply type in the name of the plan, press save, and now I'm ready to import it over in flight simulator. All right, so that's it. That's a lot of information and not a really long amount of time. But I wanted to at least provide everybody with the ability to kind of see some of the things you could do without too, too much time or effort. Uh, next time, of course, we'll go ahead and load up the airplane, and I'll show you how to get all this useful information into our flight. That is going to be a long video, however, because this is a relatively long flight. But at the same time, it's just really important that you can see kind of what I do when I fly. Again, everybody's going to be different. People with virtual airlines are going to be different. And obviously, as airplanes evolve and get different, it's going to change. But at least you'll kind of see what I do. Enjoy.